it, it's just very, it's just me coming out of my comfort zone. Of course, if I was here for a while, I'd get used to here. I'm gonna be a problem here too, but at the same time, I'm coming out, I'm coming out late, and and and, and, and coach don't play all that, so it's right to it. So, you know, you're you're getting that real fight off day one, and every time you step on the mat, you're getting that real fight, man. Because the way he pushes you for that hour, hour and a half, it's real, real tough. And the All Star app, the number one app in the business, UFC, Bellator, One Championship, PFL, and more. Get the app right now. Link in description. Man, you've been patiently waiting. You know what I mean? Like the song, patiently waiting to get matched up. And uh, you got a former champion, a world champion lined up. You know, were you surprised that, you know, he took that fight? Um, yeah, but at the same time, no. Yeah, but no. Could have been looking for an easy fight, or he trains with Javid and all those guys, man. So they gotta be putting some stuff in his head, which makes him believe it could be an easy fight. So, um, I don't know, man. I just know I need this win. I know, um, it's a good fight for me to come back in and get a new contract. So, it's the right fight for me. I don't know if it's the right fight for him, but it's the right fight for me. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things, right? A lot of variables heading into this fight. When you look at his his style, like the fighting style, it's interesting, man. It's it's fun. It's a fun matchup, right? What do you think of it? Yeah, it's definitely a good matchup. Um, he's kind of that striker that moves back and trying to counter, and I'm that striker that moves back and trying to counter. So we're both gonna have to try and switch it up on each other for this one. Um. That's what's gonna make it a good one, and Cody's fast, man. Uh, and, and I got respect for Cody, and he's a former champion. But that's the guys, that's the kind of guy that us fighters really want to try and beat. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it, it's definitely a, a challenge, but it's a challenge that I'm willing to take on and 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 overcome, and and then and then it's all uphill for me from there. When I look at the matchup, I you know, like you said. It's 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 two strikers, but you guys are MMA fighters, right? So we could get mm -hmm. a striking battle, or we could get an MMA fight. Like we don't know yet until you guys step in there and see what happens, right? But that's what makes it interesting to me, right? You guys can mix up the wrestling, mm -hmm. or you can't mix them. We don't know because you guys both have good grappling as well. You just don't show it as much. Yeah, yeah. Um, lately, I haven't showed it as much. Um, Cody's never really had that style. Yeah, he shoots takedowns or whatever, but. It's not a go-to. He's usually cracking guys. So um, he's been getting TKO'd a little bit. So, yeah, he's going to try and take me down. He's going to try and take me down. He, I'm very aware he's going to try and take me down and Rayoni me and and uh, and try and, and get a fight done like that. But, you know, I'm going to be prepared for that. Yeah, but he also loves – to bang it out though man it seems like once you get him a little thirsty for the knockout he'll just chase it until it's him or you right yeah he'll try and bang it out and he'll try and uh he'll try and do what he do that's cody you know he has that little attitude too he'll try and land that crack and try and finish me off too but at the same time that's 50 50 fight if you're gonna just come out like that so um considering he has a lot. His checks are more, way more fat than mine, you know, which means he has to be a lot more smarter than me. You know what I mean? So if I'm in Cody's shoes, um, I'm not saying taking down is going to be easy. It ain't going to be easy, but I'm sure he's going to try and take me down. For some reason, he's going to try and take me down. Garbrandt, you know, he, he does train in Vegas, and he's been training in Vegas for a couple of years, but you... You also frequent Vegas. You know, have you ever trained with them in the past? No, I haven't trained with him. I got asked that question today, actually. I haven't trained with him. I've seen him a lot. We always say what's up to each other. You know, that's a former champion. You have to have that respect. You got to look at him and, and try and figure out what this guy has that you don't have, what got him there. So every time I see these guys, him, El Jermaine, Sterling, him in a PI, I'm always like, hmm. 
what do these guys have? Well, what are these guys doing that I'm not doing? What do they, what do I got to do to to get to that spot? You know what I mean? So I'm very observant also. You know, they got a lot of guys. They stroll around. Everyone in the PI be talking. Um, I fought Javid, a lot of those dominance guy. You know, they're going to be helping them out, trying to push them, trying to get them ready perfect. I know this, but I'm ready for this. That that drives you too, right? You you know that that like you know because you fought Javid, so you know what I mean like you want to get one that you want to get that one back as well. So if he's helping him, it's like you know it gives you a little uh, fire, uh, extra fire, I sort of say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got fire. I yeah. want to get him out of there. Yeah. He don't want to lose to me. He <laughs> don't want to lose to me. Um. Oh boy. Your five fights deep into your UFC career, man. You've gone through so much since your debut in 2020. When you look mm-hmm. back, what were the biggest lessons you learned from the experiences you've had? Man, um, the lessons I kind of learned, kind of like, it goes against what I'm going to say as I take this fight because I learned to be a little bit smarter with it. I learned to give myself more time to develop my game and stuff. But at the same time, I feel like I haven't showed much of my true game. So my game for this fight is try and get my true game out, try and get my, try and get that old Trev Jones back. And then that Trev Jones is a problem for anybody in division. So at the same time, I did learn a lot of things, you know, take it slow. Um, as much as I want to be that guy that picked those super smart fights, I, I just can't be that guy. I don't have it in me. I'm not, like, crying for, oh, give me that guy. Oh, give me that easy guy, you know. I tried asking the UFC for, um like, five guys when they pulled out versus me. The UFC, Sean never wanted to give it to me. He never wanted to give me the Ronald Lawrence fight. He never wanted to give me the Mono fight. He never wanted to give me all these fights that, these guys signed and pulled out against me, but he wants to give me the fights that um, I didn't have. That, that Ryoni fight got canceled. He wanted to give me that real quick. So I'm like, okay, I took that real quick. You know, do me a favor back and give me one of those guys that pulled out of me when I end up losing to Saeed. And he came in four pounds. You know, give me give me something back. Give me some kind of leverage so I can get back on my feet. And then it never came. So when it never comes like that, you get tired of it tired of asking you get tired of whining you get tired of that guy you know you're just like whatever man it's it's like that and then you're just ready to fight who whatever it fires you up so um the cody fight fell off and i think my manager asked me he said hey you want me to put your name in that pool and i said do what you do and i don't think i don't think anything of it you know and then um about the very next morning, actually, the very next morning, I got I got my Vegas people too. Someone hit me up on my phone, and they're like, "Hey, you're fighting Cody," and it's in the AM by me, like early in the morning. So I jump up out of bed. I'm like, "What?" My manager didn't even call me yet. I didn't even sign no papers yet, and. He's like, you're fighting Cody, bro. And I'm like going, and I'm like, what? How am I fighting Cody? And then my manager messaged me back like two days later. I didn't say nothing, I didn't say nothing to him yet. He messaged me back like two days later, and he's like, I didn't get no answer back from Sean or anything yet, you know? Then I told my manager, I said, hey, I'm fighting Cody, bro. And then I explained to him why I think I'm fighting Cody and all that, you know, because I got my people and I got, and I said, yeah, I'm fighting Cody, bro. And then no call yet still. And then another two days go by. And then I get another call at six in the morning. And it's my manager. He's like, the fight's on. And I said, hey, I told you I was fighting Cody. And um, I don't know what it was. Um, They were... I, I had a feeling, you know, they're going to try and milk some time off, make it hard for me. You know, I, I knew these things, so I was already up. I was already getting going. You know, I was super heavy. 
I was training though, but I was heavy. I had to get a lot of weight off. I probably had to get like 17, 18 pounds off off the bat, and I still got weight to cut. But I ain't complaining. This is this is when I I do my best when it's these short time. My whole career's been late fights like this, so this might play out for me. Um, so um, yeah, I had my little birdie call. Said I'm fighting Cody, and I knew I was gonna. And I knew I was gonna fight him then. And um, yeah, when my manager called me, man, I was going crazy, bro. I couldn't even sleep, bro. Honestly, I was like, ah, here we go, boy, here we go. They don't want to give someone like me this type of opportunity, you know, because I feel like I haven't performed. Like honestly, I don't think I lost the Javid fight, man. I watched that fight a lot. I don't think I lost that fight. Yeah, I lost the Rayoni fight, man. He did his thing. He controlled me very well. He fought a very smart fight. He was strong out there. He had those jiu-jitsu techniques, the IQ. If you watch that fight good, there's a lot of that things he did good on the ground to keep me there that I don't believe Cody can do. Um, I think Cody's way to beat me will be to have to knock me out, which is a very hard thing to do So, because I don't quit. Just because I get hit with a good shot, it don't mean I'm going to lay on my 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 ground and, and let him pound me out or tap me. You know, I'll still hold on for life, get a hold of him, try and fight back, swing back. So, you know, it's a very hard fight for me, but it's a very hard fight for Cody. You know, Cody's fast and everything. I'm aware of what he's good at because I've been watching him more than he's been watching me. That's where this fight, I believe, um, I understand the way this fight needs to go. Um and a lot of people on my team and my side do. So we're very aware of what we need to do to try and get Cody out there. And now I just kind of get it going and get it right. You're you're in Dallas right now. And I don't think this is the first time you've been out there. I was just out here like a month ago, man. I had like a little, I ran into Coach Saif at the PI and we're always, we're cool. And um, I told him I'm going to Dallas. I'm trying to get in his gym. I got a friend out here that stays out here, but he never can get in that camp. You know, it's very close camp. He kind of get in. Then I'm like, bro, I can get us in there because I'm close for coach. And, and I'm not close for coach. I just know coach. He always talks to me. He always has a guy in the same fight card as me. So I feel the energy. I feel like I can, I can get in there. Then I end up flying out to Vegas. I'm in the PI. And then someone grabbed me by the neck. And I'm like, I turn around, and it's Coach right there. And I'm like, ah, you're the guy I need to see. You're the guy I need to see. I'm coming to Texas. I'm trying to come train. And he's like, come give it a shot, T. Come see if you like it, T. And then I'm like, okay. I came down um, mid-December. I got some training in, you know. Coach is a very rough coach, man. He's very rough. Man. He put me, he, he he focused on me a little bit, and then he, he put some guys on me and everything. He put me through it a little bit, not so much. And then, but you know, he gave me that in coming in treatment, and then he liked me. He's like, man, I like you, T. I like you, T. Uh, come to your camp here. We had a whole talk here. We expected to get a full two month camp. Unfortunately, I wasn't. That didn't happen. Um, I flew into Dallas this time. We don't have a lot of time. Um, we push for the past two days. And um, I miss, and then me and Coach had this long talk in the office yesterday, and then today he's about to put me through a real, real tough gauntlet, you know, see where I'm at from where I came from. And it's gonna be good, man. Training over here is real tough. It's real nice, there's a lot of guys. There's talent, a lot of UFC, Bellator, all kinds of guys in the room. So it's good to come over here and, and break my comfort zone, up that pace, and, you know, we'll see where I'm at right now, and then we'll progress until it's time to fight Cody over here. Who who are the, the training partners that you're working with? Man, honestly, there's a lot of training partners over here, man. Like, you don't even, you don't even get to really – go around on the mat and be associated like that because the practice is the practice is so 
boom, you're banging it out already. These pro practices are not practice where you're going to go around a lot of jacking. Hey, what's your name? Hey, like, we're all UFC fighters. We're all professionals. We've seen each other before. So you know oh, that guy. Oh, you know that guy. So there's definitely a lot of uh, talented guys. Like, uh, by the time training is done, everyone is exhausted. So, you know, we go into the locker room. We all know each other. We, we shake hands or whatever. But we're not, like, fanboying like that, you know. So uh, we just know that there's a lot of tough guys in the room. And, 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 and I know some names, but just those are necessarily not only the talented guys in the room. And those are necessarily not only the talented guys I'm working with, like, there's a lot of talented guys in the room to the point where if you're doing good against one guy, there's another guy that he's going to pull and, and put on you that does good against you. You know what I mean? So that's the way it is for me right now. It's like, oh, you're beating him? Okay, beat him. Oh, yeah, he, he's a nice one now. So it's a nice room, you know what I mean? There's just so much talent and so much. And for the most part, it's like, it, it's just very, it's just me coming out of my comfort zone. Of course, if I was here for a while, I'd get used to here. I'm going to be a problem here too. But at the same time, I'm coming out, I'm coming out late and, 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 and coach don't play all that. So it's right to it. So, you know, you're, you're getting that real fight off day one. And every time you step on the mat, you're getting that real fight, man. Because the way he pushes you for that hour, hour and a half, it's real, real tough. And, all the guys in there are talented. Even the amateurs are talented because their energy is good because the way they train is boom, boom, boom. So if you come in there with that slow starting, don't want to work so hard mentality, it's not going to work for you over here. You have to be ready to work every every single practice and, and blow energy, throw up if you got to throw up and just push yourself because that's what it's about. That's what they want to see over here. It's not that slow pace and, you know, pick my partner and then move like I want to move. It's like get in and get out. Yeah, man. Sounds phenomenal. Phenomenal environment. And uh, it's going to be phenomenal, this fight, man. It's a it's a great matchup. You know, what are your expectations out of yourself in this fight coming up? My expectation out of this fight is just to go and fight back. If I fight Cody back like I need to fight Cody back, I can beat Cody. I know I can beat Cody. If I fight Cody back like I need to fight or I'm planning on fighting, I got him. I'm telling you, I got him. Um, if I let anything get in the way of my mind or anything like that that make me not do what I want to do to Cody, I can make it a hard fight for myself. And not take anything, in away, from, anything away from Cody. Cody is talented, man. He's fast. He's good. And I have a lot of respect for him, too. He's a former champion, but we both need this win. Same like my last fight, and my last fight, I wasn't able to, to do that. So what's the next big, the best thing to do is to, to move on to the next one and try and get it done in the next one. So I'm going to try and get it done in this fight just as much as him, champion or not champion. I'm going to come on and I'm going to fight him. And I think if I can fight to my ability, like, I'm a, I'm a bad matchup for Cody. Yeah, man, it's, it's going to be great. And, you know, one last thing I wanted to ask you about is uh, John Jones. You know what I mean? He's returning. And uh, he's going to fight for the heavyweight title, man. What do you think of uh, his return? And do you feel like he's the he's the pound-for-pound pound greatest of all time? Without a doubt in my <laughs> mind, boy. That Jones blood is going to yeah. be out there. <laughs> that Jones blood is going to be out there, boy. I can't wait to get a win and say that Jones blood. Yes, John is going to be out there. John ran it to me one time at the PI. I was working out. And he cracked me in the ribs. I, he cracked me in the ribs. This is when I first got into the UFC. He cracked me in the ribs. And I turned I turned around. And the only one who would mess with me like that, it would be like my friend Kyle Rages, which was still living at the time. So I turned around and I expected it to be my friend Kyle Rages. And it was a nice crack. So I was kind of like, oh, who the hell? I was in the mid-workout, deadlifting or whatever. And I turned around and I see it was John Jones. And right when I turned around, and like I said, I don't fanboy too much, you know. But when I turned around, John Jones was screaming, ah, ah, you know how he do? He was screaming. And he's like, Jones, boy, Jones, Jones. And I and I started going crazy too. Ah, oh, Jones, man. And then we had a little talk right there, you know. I want to get this with it. I want to say, what's up, John, man? You know, let me let me come train with you one time. Take me under your wing. 
Show me some of those stump kicks, some of those push kicks. That's why I can't wait to get this win. I want to talk to John over the mic. You know, John, that Joe's blood. Take me in. Take my brother in. Let us come train for a little, you know. It'll be a hell of an experience. So, yes, John is for sure the pound for pound king. The guys he beat in the era that he beat them, the steroid era. On the guys that he beat, it's, it's just incredible. The way he beat them is incredible. The way he's still fighting now, it's incredible. If he can run away with this Serio Gone fight, to me, I don't think John needs to fight again. If he can run away with this Serio Gone fight, I truly believe. I know he's had a new contract and everything, but I just think it'll be just that fight and he'll be good with it because... I don't know. Us Jones blood guys are actually not afraid to take that risk. You know, we're not like trying to hold the crown all the way through. We're willing to put the crown on the line and let someone else earn the crown too. So I don't got that. Uh, I want to hold the crown in me. That's not my style. Like if another kid deserves to come and beat the champion and he earns it the right way, that's the way it's supposed to be. The torches are passed like that. Um... Some of these guys feel like they got to get out of the sport to keep the torch, to keep their name relevant, to not give someone else to shine. I do not think the sport should be like that. I think they should always put it on a line, whether they're on a decline or not. If you have the crown, you, you, you pass the torch correctly. You know, you don't let two guys fight for an interim title. Um, and... Not in John Jones' situation with because Francis is Francis is uh Francis is fighting for something else, you know. That's a totally different situation. But I'm talking about like uh Khabib. Like Khabib is too talented. Like look at his team. You guys are talented. You could have fought a lot more, uh, Khabib, because you're that talented. Like I believe in Khabib can still be beating guys right now, but it's something in him that pulled him out, you know. Um, they can say it's family or whatever, but yeah, it's something in him that pulled him out. His degree, the pressure that was on him, maybe with the beautiful record that he has, I think it's that, and he doesn't want to blemish that. But I think the torch should have been passed correctly because he's the greatest fighter in the world. Um, that being said, his friend has the title now, which is cool. He knew that because he's been calling that for a long time. So I'm not trying to talk about Khabib. Khabib's the best fighter of the world, one of my favorite fighters in the world. Yes, he has his family or whatever things he needs to take care of, but I still feel like he has a lot of fight in him, and that's why I say this. So I feel he should give so he should have gave someone a chance to beat him all the way through until he got that one loss, because I think the proper torch is passed like that, and that guy that actually is going to beat him is going to gain so much strength, you know? He took away that next contender's strength, you know what I mean? By not giving that proper person that could beat him that opportunity to beat him because that's how you gain strength. You know, you, you beat the GOAT, you get so strong, you know? Uh, and you become, your mental becomes so strong. Like, even for me to imagine if I was a 55 or how do I beat Khabib, it's so hard. Like, damn, he's good. But if I was to beat him, I'd be going crazy at home. Like, wow, I just beat Khabib. I'm very good. My mentality would just shoot through the roof, you know? So I feel like the torch should always be passed properly over a loss. But at the same time, the way the sport is right now, people are, like, on the hand pick, oh, I want him stuff. And some people got that privilege, but I don't. So I do what I do. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just not afraid to... To, to put my to put it on the line because that's what life's about like put it on the line if I if I got out and I gotta come back I got out and I gotta make it back that's just how it goes I'm not afraid to put it on the line because I never been that guy that had that red carpet so people might say oh you're you're, you're crazy for taking this fight you're crazy for taking that fight bro what do you want me to do I never had the red carpet I do what I do and I'm gonna continue to do what I do all right, all right. Well, March fourth, man. UFC two eighty five, Las Vegas. Trevin, always good catching up. And uh, make sure you guys go in the descriptions, download the All Star app, 